When I was a kid, I did not understand fractions, and now my kids need help with fractions, and what do I do? If you've got these questions on the brain, then this is the episode for you. Welcome to Math 345 Support. Hey, everybody. My name is Sarah, but a lot of third, fourth, and fifth graders, they know me as Miss McCarthy. While I create a ton of video lessons geared towards students in grades three, four, and five, I thought it might be a good idea to start releasing videos for the parents, for the teachers, tutors, basically anyone looking to help a third, fourth, or fifth grader to make math make sense. So today I'm going to show you how I help students to determine if fractions are equivalent or not. Nah. All right, so here we have two fractions. We have four sixths and two thirds. Now, just to review the top number, you see that number on top? That's called the numerator. It describes the amount that is being considered or shaded. And when you jump down from the fraction bar denominator, it's the total number of equal parts in each whole. That is a wrap that I've been teaching for years to help students remember and identify the parts, the numerator and the denominator. I'm gonna put an N and a D down there just so you know. Also to review, when we're reading fractions, we read the top number, the numerator, like normal, four. And when we jump down into the denominator, we read it like the grade level, six. And that's really hard for me to say. So to read this, we say four sixths and two thirds. Awesome. Okay, so we're going to determine if the fractions are equivalent using two different, actually, let's do three different strategies. We'll do it on an area model. We will model it on a number line. And the final way will be the way to check it just to make sure because sometimes fractions, they can look very, very close. And there is a way to cross multiply to check. So let's go ahead with way number one, which will be the area model. So we have the first, we're comparing two different fractions, right? So let's draw two different strips, two different holes. Here's one hole. And I'm gonna draw another hole that is the same exact length. Well, as close as I can get it, okay? So this is going to represent four sixths in just a minute. And this fraction, this bar will represent two thirds in just a minute. Now, let's go to four sixths. I circled the denominator because it is even. Six is even, which means, here's what I teach kids, is that I can split it in half so I can break apart the parts a little bit better. Okay, because now that it's in half, I can focus on creating three parts on this side and three parts are on this side and three plus three equals six. It just helps to make them a little bit more even. Boom. So that's the total number of equal parts in this hole. But we need to shade four of them. One, two, three, four. And some students might go, wait a minute, can I do like one, two, three, four, and just kind of bounce around? And my answer is you definitely can. But when we're comparing fractions, it's really helpful to start from the left and go over. That way we can see which one is more or if they are equivalent or equal. Now let's go ahead and take a look at thirds. So this thirds right here is odd. It's an odd number, meaning I can't use my little halvesy trick. I have to really focus on just creating the parts as equal as I can. Okay. And now I'm shading in two because my numerator is two. All right, so looking at this, it looks like they're really close, right? And I lied. I said I was gonna show you three ways. I'm actually gonna put another way in there too. If we have two thirds and we're going to four sixths, two times what? And three times what? Let's check that. If I have the same number in this spot, it means that my fractions are equal. So two times what equals four? Two times two equals four. Three times what equals six? Three, six. Three times two equals six. Look, I have the same number here. Same on the bottom, same on the top or same on the top, same on the bottom. And that means that these are mathematically, look, you can see the mathematical pattern there, which means that they are indeed equal. If you can multiply by a fraction that is equivalent to one, it means that they are equal. Okay, so this is way number one, which is the area model. They looked really close. This is way number two. 
which is multiplying by a fraction equal to one whole. That's way number two. Let's go to way number three. I'm gonna bring it right here. Way number three could be with a number line. So we're gonna pretend like this didn't happen. I'm gonna do it again over here. I'm sorry for the mess. Really, truly, I am. <laughs> this is why I love working on a whiteboard because if I mess up, I can just erase it. But I'm working with paper today. So again, creating a number line, zero and one, and the same distance down here because we're comparing two different fractions. All right, so four six would be right here. And then two thirds, boom, boom, would be right here. Okay, and as you can see, they do look equivalent there. So that's way number three, is on a number line. Now this is not my favorite way to compare fractions. I actually like showing students, like really getting them comfortable with area models. Um, this is another way that, that the standard in Florida, especially that wants them to learn, is by multiplying by a fraction that's equal to one. Personally, I like the area model, and if it's close, I use cross multiplication to check which I'm gonna bring up here. So this is number four, cross multiply. Now do not have students depend solely on this method. Why? Because we want them to understand what is actually happening with fractions, right? Here it looks like they are equal and there is a way to check it using cross multiplication. So if I was like, man, those look equal, let me cross multiply. You take six times two, which equals 12, and then you go here, zhoo, three times four equals 12. And look, the products are equal, therefore the fractions are equal. We know it for sure. Got the area model. We had multiplying by a fraction that's equal to one whole. We had the number line. Just ignore the one that I botched down there, I'm so sorry. And we had cross multiplying up there. So don't forget to lock it in that they are equal fractions, and that is how you can determine if the fractions are equal or not. Now this video is geared towards adults, anybody helping a third, fourth, and fifth graders, but what I love to do is create videos for students in grades three, four, and five. So if you know that you have students that need help in those grade levels, you should definitely check out my website. You can find the link below. Tons of videos, grab yourself a free trial, tons of resources for you, and I'm here to help you out. That's what I love to do. And if you have a skill that you're like, hmm, I'm not really sure about how to go about teaching this, send it my way. That's how I create these videos videos is I have teachers and parents who are like, hey, Ms. McCarthy, can you show me how to do determine if the fractions are equivalent? And bam, there is a video on it now. Or I can point you in the direction of videos that I've created for students to help you out. All right, before we go, remember that you were created for a reason. You matter and what you choose to do with your life matters too. So go out there and change the world in your own special way. And I cannot wait to see you all on the next episode of Math 345 Support. See you later.